Hey, welcome to Nourishable. I'm Dr. Lara, and I'm here at the American Society of Nutrition Conference in Baltimore. Today is Saturday, uh, the second day of the conference, and I learned so many exciting things today. Um, I'm just going to focus on stuff that I learned in the microbiome sessions today, um, but there was really so much I learned. Um, so the first thing that I learned in one of the microbiome sessions was looking at how we need to take the microbiome into consideration and how personalized it is when looking at different types of diets. So in this particular study, they were looking at at how the different types of microbiomes would predict how well an individual responded to a weight loss diet. So if you had one type of bacteria that was really predominating, that would mean you wouldn't respond very well to this weight loss diet versus if you had a different community of microbes living in your gut, then you would respond really well to that weight loss diet. So I thought that was really interesting and another dimension to add to this whole personalized nutrition area. Um, another uh, topic that I thought was really interesting was looking at studies comparing a low fiber or no fiber diet to a high fiber diet. Um, a lot of types of fibers can't be digested by the human, but they can be digested by the microbes. So the more, micro, the more fiber that you eat in your diet, the more of these fiber-loving microbes that you'll get in your gut. Now, if you end up eating a diet that doesn't have very much fiber in it, then some of those fiber-loving microbes are gonna disappear, but you're still gonna have a lot of microbes in your gut, and those microbes have to eat something. And so sometimes these microbes will start eating the uh, carbohydrates that are in the mucus lining of your gut. Um, now, I know it may sound kind of gross that we have mucus in our gut, but it's actually really important for a healthy gut to have a nice thick layer of mucus that helps separate what's inside your gut from getting inside of your body. And so what these studies found, these studies were in mice, but they were showing that when they fed the mice the no fiber diet, that all of a sudden they had a big spike in these mucus loving microbes and those mucus loving microbes they ate away the lining um, so that the mucus became really really thin and then these mice they ended up being really susceptible to getting infections because um, other types of pathogenic bacteria could get into inside their body, body through the gut through this impaired mucus lining really easily. So I thought that was really interesting um, and it'd be interesting to kind of put that in the context of humans and thinking about how important it is to eat a high fiber diet in humans so that you're nourishing those good, love, those good microbes and not um, relying on the microbes eating your mucus in order to survive. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, number three, I listened to a really interesting study comparing how, looking at how the microbiome changes when you're on a ketogenic diet. Um, so this was a, a, a new study that's about to be published, but there are some really major changes in the microbiome when you go to a, eating a ketogenic diet that is you know, 80% fat, very, very low in carbohydrates, so therefore very low in fiber. Um, and then the last thing that was microbiome related that I thought was fascinating today was looking at breast milk human breast milk, another one of my favorite body fluids to research. Um, and so this, uh, some of this research was really looking at the whole idea that it's really energy intensive for a mother to produce breast milk. And one of the compounds that's in breast milk are, um, it's this type of carbohydrate, they're called human milk oligosaccharides. So just kind of a HMO, it's just a fancy name for these types of carbohydrates that are found in human breast milk. Now, the infant baby can't digest these HMOs. So you would ask the question, like, why are they there? Why would they be in breast milk if breast milk has evolved to be the perfect nutrition for an infant baby? Um, but it turns out that these HMOs can be digested by microbes. And so the fact that these HMOs are in the human breast milk, um, that is helping develop the infant's microbiome to go in a particular direction. So we've known for a while that there are pretty big differences between the microbiomes of formula-fed infants versus breastfed infants. Um, but this, one of the big reasons is because the breastfed infants will develop a microbiome with lots of microbes that love eating those HMOs. And then in turn, when these microbes digest the HMOs, they poop out beneficial chemicals for the infant. Um, so I thought that was really fascinating as well. Um, so, so many things going on here that are really exciting and I will report back tomorrow on what I learned then. Bye! That's what science tastes like.